Well, hey guys, welcome back to the shells. We're, uh, we're out in the garage today, out in the shop, and uh, it's been raining for about two days now. A lot of good storms last night, so it's pretty muddy outside. We're not gonna get anything done out there for the next few days. So we're gonna come in the shop here and get some work done on this old Bronco here. Um, today's task is to weld all the extra holes shut that are in the doors for the mirrors. I'll show you what we got going on here on this side. We've already done a few on this side and I got the driver's side or the passenger side done, but right now we have two, four, six, eight, ten holes in this door. Luckily, these four holes here match the mirrors that are going on this truck. We, uh, Jamie ordered new mirrors for it, so we had a matching set because the, the passenger side did not match the driver's side. So we ordered a, a new set, that way they match. So we need to eliminate these four holes and these, these two small holes here. Uh, we already got the passenger side done. Because as I said, this mirror did not match the driver's door mirror. This had 13 holes in it <laughs> throughout. I don't know how many different mirrors they make for a 78 Bronco, but 13 different holes, and none of them matched the mirror that is going on in the truck. One of the holes was about a quarter inch. It probably would have worked, but I'm already welding it shut, so I welded them all shut. Uh, and then we're gonna we'll build a template, mark our new holes, and we'll drill the four holes. So on this side, what we're gonna do, and the way I do it, um, there's two ways to do it. You can put a piece of metal behind there and then fill in around it, or you can literally just plug weld them. Uh, I'm optioning to plug weld them, that way there's no metal behind there, simply because if you got two pieces of metal together, the moisture is gonna sit around the inside of it. It's gonna create a little issue later on. If this was a Honda Civic or something like that, where you're you know, dealing with nice thin metal, then yeah, that would be the way to do it, is put a patch behind it and then try to slowly tack that in. This is an old door, it's got some metal to it, so basically what I do on these old ones is I start on the top, you can't go right at the hole and just start welding it shut. It's just going to burn a big hole. So what I like to do is come through and start a tack on the face of the door. And then once that tack is in place, I'll probably do like three tacks and then come in at an angle with the wire and try to weld it down to the bottom. Don't fill it up, but you want to get the weld down to the surface of the door so when you grind it smooth, it's nice and clean and you don't, you know, if you just weld all the way around it and then up on the door, you're gonna grind it all off and probably just open the hole back up again. So we're gonna set it up here and uh, tack this one shut and then we'll probably get these two done down here quick. All right, so we got it all set up here. We got the, uh, we're using the Lincoln Electric Power MIG 210 and we got our voltage and everything set pretty low because it's gonna be easy to burn and make a mess. Basically I'm running about around 16 volts and about 120 inch on my wire speed. Uh, so we're just gonna start at the top here and just slight tacks, just just enough to get, get to stick basically. Now it's gonna give us our foundation to work off of. So now we're gonna come down here, we're gonna go up against that tack and try to work our way down. Now we're back to the surface of the door, so now we just bring the tack up onto the surface of the door. And I think we got a little fire going inside, so always have your air blower handy. Now we'll just move down these lower ones. The uh, ones at the bottom can actually be a little tougher. Same thing, we're just gonna try to get up on it. That one good. 
Got a little too much of the edge that first time. Okay, we got it all cleaned up here. Everything actually looks really good. Uh, this up here is not real great, but this this was uh, pushed in pretty far, so I didn't grind it all the way down because it's actually in a, a little valley there. I'm going to try to get inside and pound that back up. Other than that, the rest of it worked out pretty good. I think we're good to go on this side. As far as that goes, and while we're here and we've got the grinder set up, we have to uh, address this mess here. Um, <clears throat> it's supposed to say Bronco right here and all the whole, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. It is literally just deteriorating off of there. I've never seen something like that. So we're going to strip everything off of here, get back, back down to bare metal. Uh, the holes are there for the Bronco emblem, but we are going to put the emblems back on this truck. So I need to get all that mud out of there, get that cleaned up and then get that area work back up again. So might as well do that while we're here making a mess. We got all the nastiness off of there anyways back down to metal. It's cool, it just there's no rust or anything. It's just uh this is these are the four holes where the emblem was originally. And then whoever did the truck out in California, or I don't really know where the truck came from. It came from California, but I don't know if that's where it spent its life at. But they instead of welding the hole shut like we just did on this door the proper way, they literally just pounded the holes in and uh, fill it full of Bondo. And that's what that whole area was bubbling for, was because the air was getting behind it through the mud. It's coming up from behind the cowl, underneath the paint, and I'm just making a mess. So we're going to uh, get the whole zone back up. Easiest way I find is just an eighth inch drill bit. Try to find the hole, and, and then just I just walk around it in a circle. Because on these Broncos and these older Fords, if I remember correctly, there's a uh, insert that's going to go in there. And then the emblem has little pins on it that go into that insert. So you don't want to make these holes bigger than they are. Otherwise, the inserts won't fit tight. So by using a drill bit, a small drill bit running around the outside, we're not making the hole bigger. We're just cleaning it up. Maybe a little bigger, right? It's not that big. It's not doing that big of a job. So there's our holes. And like I said, he wants the emblems back on. So we need to, now we need to fix where they pounded this in at. And uh, that's not too bad, but we'll see how it goes here. Okay, so as far as getting these back out, um, this is the first time I ever ran into this. Um, it's not very often you find, I don't work on this old stuff for starters, but basically what I need to do is get these holes back out at least flush with the surface or at least high side. They can't be recessed because otherwise when you put the little insert in the hole, it's not going to clip around the metal. So these have to be 
there can't be any mud around the hole. So what I did on the other side is I just took a 90 degree pick and just kind of worked it in there and just didn't get real medieval on it, but just give it a little tug. Again, try not to make that hole bigger than it is. And we can do a little hammer time on this a little later. Okay, there's obviously something inside there. It's not going to let me get into that one. I can also take my stud gun and work around that perimeter of it if I need to later to get it where I want it. Like I said, you know, we can have a little filler around the hole, but not on the edge of the hole. That's already 100% better. So I'll probably take my stud gun. There's a dent here and a dent here. I'll work them back up. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just kind of getting everything preliminary, I suppose you could say. We'll get stud gun out, work this a little later, and yeah, work the other side. So that's good enough for now. That's good enough for now. The other door is good enough for now. We got one last thing to tackle. So the next thing we got to figure out here is what's going on in the back. So we have, uh, obviously I got tailgate off. I'll show you that in a minute. So we got the spare tire rack. That needs to get eliminated. They're just, again, just full of Bondo. But over here on the side here, I uh, honestly, I don't know what's going on. So this is where the hole is for the spare tire rack that comes around the corner. It's full of Bondo. I'm assuming there's another one somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes, which I don't know what they are. I'm assuming, and I'm just assuming, that uh, somewhere along the line this thing was wrecked. You know, it's a 78 or 79, so it's been around a few days. It was wrecked back here, big dent some sort, and they drilled the holes. Remember the, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they drill a hole and then they put like a screw in there and then yank the metal back out and then they bond it over the hole basically. I think that's what happened here. So we are going to get the top off of this thing because it needs to come off anyways. And then we're gonna take this paint off of this area here and see what else we find. And then that'll help us make a decision. There's the other hole for the, you can see the crack in the paint. So once we get the top off, we'll get this ground up and then uh, see what we're going to do to deal with it. Well, it looks like it should pretty, be pretty straightforward. It's just got a bunch of uh, 7 16 bolts around across the top up there and across this side. Then hopefully the three of us can get it off, get it uh, off the truck here and get to it. So I'm going to set up a time lapse and we're going to get it done. Yeah, and just like that, it's convertible. And I gotta say, this thing is freaking clean. And I don't even know if this top's ever even been off of this truck before. I mean, all the original seals and everything, it was stuck on there pretty good, but there's not a speck of rust or anything underneath that thing. You can see where the where the new paint came up to right there in that edge. They did they just blew it right underneath the cover. They didn't take the they didn't take the top off when they did this paint job, so. And I don't know if this top's been off before. Whatever. It's going to spend a lot of time off this summer if we get this thing done for him. But So anyways, back to this mess. Let's get the grinder out.
you have uh, ever heard the saying, opening up a can of worms, uh, this is what they're referring to. <laughs> we have a mess. Um, it looks to me like the spare tire mount was mounted on here. They backed into something. It twisted it in, pushed all that in. And that spare tire bracket that is behind the quarter panel here, I can feel it up through the taillight, it's very strong. And I don't think I can... I don't want to fix this, honestly. Um, I don't think this should be repaired this way. They did. They drilled the holes and then used that to pull it out somewhat. I mean, that's probably, that was probably at least a half inch, five eighths deep mud right there, right here, and a good half inch up there. So that is, that is the improper way to fix this. So I'm going to have to get a hold of Jamie tomorrow and find out what our options are. This needs to be replaced, but I need to find something to replace it with. You, can, uh, you can't buy this as a patch panel up here, so we're gonna have to, I'll call in tomorrow, we'll get an answer, but one way or another, this is gonna get cut off and replaced, so. Um, I'll just give you a quick rundown here of the hood. Uh, it's ready to go for the most part. For its first coat of primer, uh, we had a pretty good dent right here, and then obviously we had to get the forward emblems back out again you can see that they did the same thing they pounded all the holes in and then filled it full of bondo just not the correct way to do it and then on the tailgate same thing i mean this tailgate is solid for a bronco this thing is solid little bit of surface rust right here but uh, we're going to do some sandblast on that as soon as it's done raining outside but same thing here where it's the bronco emblems were they literally just pounded all these things down. I mean, I bet a quarter inch. It was, they were in there pretty deep. And then they just filled the full of Bondo. So took all the Bondo out, worked it all back up to the surface real close. Um, a little skim coat of mud over there. We just had a little buckle here, um, right in this area here. Same thing down here, a couple dents. I mean, this thing here, remember, this thing's like, what, 78 or 79. So it's been abused. Um, Again, these are all just skim coats though. We did a little stud gunning in a couple spots to pull out some bigger dents that they just had full of Bondo. And then on the tailgate, so this is going to get the uh, freewheeling package sticker. So this is all covered with the freewheeling sticker. So we just have to make this basically just smooth and shiny for the most part. And then it's just gonna get covered in vinyl. So other than that, the tailgate's ready for its force coat of primer, but I need to get it out. Do a little sandblasting on this area right here. And then, uh, Actually, we'll probably sandblast a hole inside of it there and then just get a good, good coat of epoxy on there. And then we'll get this in primer here. First coat of primer. So I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. It's, uh, it's getting late and I'm kind of done out here. So we're going to uh, we're gonna get a hold of Jamie in the morning, make a decision what we're going to do here, and then uh, we'll get started on this. And this is the next problem we need to get done. So. Anyways, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Appreciate you watching. Thanks, guys.